Okay, so I do have um, the agenda and I sent out a revised agenda that would include in the consent agenda, it would include the finance notes and the board governance notes and also a correction to the minutes, which I, I resent. And so I just want to make sure everybody saw that I had done that. Yep. Okay. Yep, got it. Do you want to start and Larry will get here when he gets here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Um, so do I have an approval for the consent agenda? I'll so, move it. Oh. I'll no. second. <laughs> Joe and Don. Second. I'll second. <laughs> and then I need a motion to, so that's the approval of the actual consent agenda. And then do I need a second motion to, or is that? Revise the minutes. Are done. The minutes are a part of the consent well, agenda. Why don't we have the consent agenda show that we revise the minutes? Okay. We correct it, and then we all approve it. All right. So Joe made that motion. I'll second it. Jenny. Jenny. Yeah, I told you. There goes one. That's Benny. Benny, don't go back by there again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's okay. He could do that. Um, so in terms of action items, the finance committee met yesterday and reviewed the financial statements from August. And um, the finance committee did not review the claims because Ginny has been auditing the claims. So um, I don't know, do we do the motion separately? I you think by now I remember. I think I, I think need a motion. To approve the financial statements from August 2020. I'll move. I'll second. Why don't you guys say He's your name? After. Yeah. 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 Joe so who's made the motion and Russ seconded. Mm -hmm. um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That was everybody, Dixie. Um, I'll be right back. Okay. Um, I'll, what, we can wait and talk about the claims because I think I need a second motion. But in the, in the meantime, let's move to the appointment of an election chair. And I'm going to um, bring Jackie on this. And uh, Jackie, you probably told the Board Governance Committee this information, but the background is um, I talked to our lawyer about how, how do we run our election in the, in the pandemic, right? And if people can't, we, don't, we didn't know, could we have people in the building to vote or not vote? So as you know, she always has to go back to what does our legislation say? And our legislation is pretty vague. So then um, it had some things in there and some things not in there. And uh, then she went and looked at what do school districts do? What does other special districts do? And um, came up with some information. So our legislation does say that we're supposed to have an election chair for each municipality but we've never done that. I think that might have happened in the first election when we, you know, the votes were held in, you know, Troop and Aurelius and uh, all of that. But as far as I know, we haven't done that. So since that hasn't been our practice, the lawyer felt that having an election chair appointed by uh, the board is really similar to the school district point, appoints the school district board appoints a clerk, the school clerk, or, or in a town, the town clerk. 
So that's really what we're going to be asking the board to appoint Jackie to act as the election chair. So Jackie, you fill in whatever I left out. I feel like you covered everything. Um, the election chair pretty much does what I already do. Um, gets everything organized for the election, uh, arranges all the details, um, gets all the legal ads sent on time. Um, so now it would just be official. Um, and we see, and this is the first time we're talking about um, absentee ballots. And so that's what made this a little bit more, we had to be more official. And so the election chair is also responsible for receiving absentee ballots, yes? Yes, well actually, um, re yes, they're sent to me. Um, they can be received at the main desk, received and recorded at the main desk um, by library staff, but I handle all of the, the details and make sure all of the, the pieces that are there in play um, with that. But we did receive instructions from the lawyer that said that they can be received at the desk by any library staff member. Um, and we just have to record when they came in. Um, I'm working on detailed staff instructions right now. Um, I have contacted uh, Jacobs Presser printing our official ballot envelopes. Um, so those should be ready. And uh, the lawyers told us that we can have the ballots in the absentee ballot application and the absentee ballots available starting uh, September 28th, uh, 30 days before the election takes place. Um, so we, what we can do is we'll have the absentee ballots available for pickup at the main desk starting on that date. Um, we also were told that we can have a PDF or like downloadable form on our website so people who are interested can um, can print that at home uh, and fill out the form and bring it in and then from there we check um, we'll have a voter registration list and we check that make sure that they're registered to vote for whatever district uh, whatever trustee they're voting for um, and from there we give them the absentee ballot and then there's a variety of other rules that we have to follow um, which I did create I just shared with Lisa uh, updated timeline so I can make that into a PDF and Lisa if you want to share that with everybody after yeah, the meeting um, but it just has those deadlines for um, when we can start uh, when they can be available the absentee ballots um, how uh, we can receive the deadline for requesting ballots by mail um, the deadline for uh, returning the absentee ballot application for in-person pickup. Um, so there's still a lot of little pieces that we organize with the lawyer and we're putting into process. So, so I need, um, I need a motion or a resolution and I'm never sure what the difference is. One of you um, parliamentarians might know that stuff. Um, a point for the board to appoint Jackie as the election chair officially. So I'll move that we appoint Jackie Cole uh, election chair person for the 2020 um, library election. Perfect. That's Ginny. Okay. I'll second that. That's Dawn. It's Dawn. Uh, is there any discussion, any questions? I mean, that's a lot, so there's a lot of stuff. I'm glad you're doing it. It makes sense, and I'm glad we're we're doing this today. Yep. Thank you, Jackie. I'm going to just point out Jackie's really amazing with all the details. Really amazing. Um, you know, she does, and I'll set, I'll send this out. That all of these deadlines. Okay, so she's going to talk a little bit more. We got to vote. Oh, you got to vote. That's right. Vote. Um, all in favor. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we're in. We're in like Flynn. Um, I have to say, just because I'm the detail person, uh, is it technically the 2021 trustee election held in 2020? I don't know if that needs to be marked in your, if that distinction is important. 
<laughs> Sorry. No, I'm glad you said that. So it's the, uh, you, we'll send the wording to Dixie. Okay. For the minutes. Okay. Um, so that was the appointment of the election chair. And it, Jackie, if you can hang on for a few more minutes, then we're actually going to talk about the, uh, about the process for the election. But I want to go back and um, see if I need a, um, a motion to approve claims for the month of August. Because um, when Joe stepped away, I didn't want to finish finance without. Thank you. I'll make that motion. Joe. Joe. Okay. Second, Jim. Uh, thanks, Jim. Jim? Yep. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we're good. So, uh, <coughs> appointment of the election chair. Um, then at finance committee, we talked about the DLD grant. Um, so that's the grant that I applied for to renovate the West Lobby, Finger Lakes, uh, recommended our funding at $288,194. The total project cost is $511. And we had asked for 75% funding, and this is 62% funding. So I need to let Finger Lakes know whether we're okay with receiving not the 75% with a lesser amount. Um, this amount that the library would be responsible for is 223,000, and that is within the range that we had talked about um, if it was a 50-50 grant match, it's a little bit less because we're getting the 62%. So uh, are there questions? That's a lot of numbers I just threw out. No, yeah. no I, I think we at the finance committee discussed it fairly well and it's, uh, it's our opportunity to get two hundred a grant of two hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars, and fortunately, we have the money from the done request. From the done request, um, so, so I'm in favor of it. Um, so, can I just ask? Um, so, we we were hoping for seventy-five percent, yes. but we were funded for sixty-two percent. Correct. But, you, you must have anticipated a range because this is within our window. So right. we weren't yeah, sure what we Right. I, I tried to I tried to use the fifty percent yeah. base, um, but we applied for seventy five percent. Okay. Yeah. No. Sounds good. All right. I just need uh, the board to approve the uh, amount recommended by Finger Lakes. I'll make the motion to approve. It's Russ. Thanks, Russ. Hey, Russ. Uh, I'll second it, Joe. Thank you. Okay. All Thanks, in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. So, Dixie, if you need more of that language, I can get it to you. I think I got it pretty good. Okay. Um, the other action item is the second reading of the employee handbook. I don't, I, I didn't get any questions from anybody. I don't know, do you wanna, do you wanna wait another month um, and table this for now? Do you wanna move ahead? I'm not sure the best way. To, move ahead with the new newly revised employee handbook. I didn't, I looked at it, as you know, I think we talked about this and I wrote down a lot of notes and I thought it was fascinating and thorough. And my only concern was I, I was, um, I don't know, I was just thinking from the perspective of an employee, it's pretty overwhelming. And then you know, to just sit, have a job that I like and sit down and read all this, I'd be like, what, what? I 
would never do this. I would never do that. And then you explained to me that the part of this service is that the person would do an introduction, an orientation for staff so that it's not quite as intimidating and it's really to help us make sure we're following the appropriate rules and guidelines and um, ethic, ethical guidelines for managing the nonprofit. So um, I don't know if my reading it again would bring up a different question, but um, what's, what's the window? What do, how do other people feel about this? I can't see everybody at once. When did we first look at that? It's been a little while, hasn't it? It has been. Don, you, you were one of the people, I think you're one of the only people besides Danette Davis that was, saw the first draft of the change and you, you were like, wait, this is really overwhelming. Yeah. Um, um, so it's been, it's been about a year, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, should we have a chance to look at it again since it's been that long and just figure it would be, um, an item for ne our next meeting in October? For a vote. We don't like skirt over it. Right. No, that's fine. And we did, I did put it out for last month as a first reading. So that was the opportunity for people to really try and look at it and think about it and ask questions. Um, but I, I think that's why I'm, I'm feeling like it was so much to absorb. I, I think my preference would be to um, table it for now and bring it in October um, and make sure that everybody has a, a, another chance to look at it or ask, ask questions about yeah. the points in there. That's fine. Let's yeah. do that. Yep. Table um, until October. Yep. All right. So if we jump to the trustee election part, um, Jackie, if you want to go through a, um, the highlights of how the process works. Um, so today at 6 p.m. Um, all the, the trustee petitions are due. Um, so that's the deadline for getting them in. Um, and so then once I have all of the candidates' names, I will take the legal ad um, from the lawyer, which I'm, I'm waiting on. I just sent him an email. Um, and I will add those in and that, that will be announced in this Sunday Citizen. That will be the legal ad announcing the availability of the trustee petitions. Um, we have a couple different legal ads. Um, the election is October 28th, uh, Wednesday, October 28th. I just hired uh, the election inspectors, um, Pat and Jim. They are coming back, so they agreed to do that. Um, I'm meeting with Dory next week because we're going to talk about all of the health and safety regulations and kind of walk through the space, uh, make sure that we have everything in correctly set up and the proper signage. Um, Dory is our COVID workplace safety coordinator. Yeah. Okay. Just so you know, we have one. So she's going to help me make those plans. Um, like Lisa said, the kind of the extra layer to this year is the absentee ballots. Um, so as far as that process goes, they will be available starting Monday, September 28th. Um, you have two, you have a couple options with those. So the absentee ballot application will be available on our website and at the main desk. So you can either go to the website or the desk to pick that up. Um, people can then fill it out right there in person if they want and receive the absentee ballot immediately. Um, they can take the application home and either bring it back to us or mail it into us, mail it back to us. Um, but you have the option to request that the ballot be mailed to you um, or just pick it up in person. Um, so both of those have different deadlines. If you're requesting that it 
be mailed to you. Um, the deadline is seven days before the election. Um, if you are just going to pick it up in person, uh, you can pick it up one day before the election. Um, so a couple different timelines for that. Um, and Dixie, I can mail you or email you the, uh, the timeline with these things I'm mentioning. I don't know if you need that for your, for your notes. Okay. Um, That'd be good, thank you. Yeah, um, as we receive the absentee ballot, uh, we've received instructions for staff from the lawyer on how to handle that, um, how to note down um, when they were received. Um, we will have two different ballot boxes that, that lock. Um, one will be for uh, voting the day of, one will be for the absentee ballots. And then there's a procedure for the inspectors on counting the absentee ballots and counting uh, the votes from that day. Um, so that's kind of what we're working through to finalize right now. Um, and then there is no uh, budget referendum this year, so we didn't have to add that piece in. Um, uh, Jackie? Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a silly question maybe, but you said seven days, so if I wanted it mailed to me, if I called the library on the 21st, um, you'd mail it to me and that's plenty of time, you think? Um, this would, is seven, I just, uh, I was wondering about the mail. You think it'd be plenty of time for it to get wherever we're sending it in the county? So um, you actually can't just call and request an absentee ballot be mailed. You have to submit an absentee ballot application. Ah, so okay. you have until October 21st to get that application into the library and um, we can mail the absentee ballot no later than six days before. Um, okay. That's the timeline the lawyer gave us. So I would get all of the final requests on the 21st, and then I would mail them immediately out in the morning of the 22nd. Um, okay. I do have to add that to the, the timeline. Um, that's what they, they told us was standard practice. Um, so that's, that's what we're following. Okay. Um, and right on the absentee ballot is that it, it is due um, at the library by 5 p.m. the day of the election. So if someone reads that and doesn't think it will get mailed in time, they can bring it in. Bring it in. I mean, yes, people can bring in the absentee ballots on the day of the vote. Um, someone who has already uh, submitted an absentee ballot can vote that day of the election, but then as the votes are getting counted, their absentee ballot will be um, discarded or voided. Um, but so there's a, yeah, those are the little details that I'm working in the instructions for the inspectors um, and then the instructions for staff. Okay. Thank um, but you. The, Yes. Sorry. So yeah, I don't have an answer. Like it, it should be enough time. It's just the guidelines that the lawyers gave us. So it's kind of what I'm following. Gotcha. I get it. Are there any questions about the absentee ballots segment? Mm -hmm. um, one question that I have um, is, uh, Jackie, you were just telling me earlier that um, there's the thing about placing the legal notice in the municipal buildings, but the municipal buildings aren't open. So um, I, I, we, we kind of talked in crossing and I was wondering if we can talk a little bit about that. And then the idea of the letter from the board to the municipalities. If that needs to go out next week, how, yeah, how I was, I actually was going to check on the municipalities and I did not. So um, it's not hard. All I needed to do was use my internet and I just haven't done that yet. But I, I 
expect that they're either closed or they have very limited hours. Um, but so yeah, that would be the uh, like the county office building, like here in Auburn, That's would be awesome. one of them. Not the county; it would be City Hall. Oh, City Hall. Okay. The the town of Owasco, the town of Fleming. If Fleming doesn't have a trustee, right? Right. So we don't. I mean, we can. Okay. Yeah, okay. we don't have to deliver them a letter this year. Typically, we would even because we have the budget referendum. Um, but it would only be Senate, Alaska, and um, Auburn that would need to receive the letter, letting them know. Wow. Okay. Election. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I mean, it might be nice to just say, "Hey, you know these. Hey, Fleming, this is." Oh, here's your yeah. representatives. If they're not up for election, there won't be a, a, a an increase to the tax levy. I mean, but it's that's not part of the election. That would just be like nice. Um, so we were working on a letter. Um, I guess maybe Larry should look at it at this point. Maybe I don't know. I haven't talked to Jackie about this or you, Lisa, but. I thought we were going to, well, you're back. So I guess we need to talk about the letter or if you wanted to change it or have Larry look at it. I think it comes from him usually, or does it come from you? I no, shared a, from me. Yeah, I shared a really rough draft of like what we used last year, but I still have to add in um, the the right. candidates running this year to it and make some adjustments for, uh, you know, absentee ballots and information that is new to this year. Um, right. But usually it's just a brief breakdown of uh, who the current representatives are, um, their terms, who ran for, for this cycle, and um, just like some information about what's going on at the library. Uh, and then I think in, in a, We've done it differently a couple um, in past years. Um, some years we've sent it by email. Um, I think a couple of years we've actually gotten it mailed out on time. Um, so we kind of send it within a range of time, like starting September 29th, um, but before October 8th. We try to send it before the legal notices are posted in the municipality building, municipal buildings. Um, so within that range of time. So maybe, uh, maybe Larry, Jenny, Jackie, maybe we could um, just read about, sure. about that. Um, do, you, do you think um, instead of having something posted in a municipal building, we should ask them to post it on their website? So if they're not open to the public. Yeah. Or they have that option, I guess. Yeah, it makes sense. Are there any other points about the election process that people have questions or concerns? Um, we have been doing the trustee spotlights, which are phenomenal. Um, They've been a lot of fun. Thank you to, to everyone who's who sent um, the info in. I just posted Jenny's was our, our first one posted on the library's website. Um, so if you would like to send me a, a picture and a brief blurb, I can create a graphic and share it with you and we can get that uh, posted. I think we'll do it from now up until the election. Um, just because it's fun for people to kind of see like the face of the board who, you know, it's members and why they love the library and why they joined. Um, Ginny and I though were, oh, we had a question um, and I don't know, did we resolve this or did you want to bring it up about posting the spotlights of members who are currently running? You know, I, so we have one uh, member who is currently running and she couldn't make the meeting today, but she, so she's on the website, which I think is fine. She is a board member and she's on our website, but I, I kind of agree with you that it's just would feel odd to have a person's testimonial who also is running. I wouldn't want there to be 
um, an illusion of, um, so we're sort of help, like, helping I'm, promote an, a person in a way. So I don't know. I, I guess my, my feeling is we probably shouldn't do it on social media. Anybody else? That makes sense, Jenny. I, yeah. I would yeah, yeah. send the wrong message. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have thought of it actually. <laughs> so, but actually, you're right. It does. It just doesn't feel like it's probably the best choice to do that. So, what we can do is that um, after the election, we can do like a welcome. You know, welcome to our our new board members, and then share their spotlights. Sure. Um, that sounds good. Yeah. And, okay. That's a good idea. I like that, Jackie. Yeah. Yep. And Jackie, I've had mine written for a couple weeks now, but it's just still sitting on a piece of paper. <laughs> so, Jay Kolb at Seymour Library. Lib. Lib. Uh, Lib. Lib. Dot org. At Lib. Dot it's org. at Seymour Lib. Okay. Dot org. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, Jack, before I, I ask you to sign off, do you have any kind of updates from the friends? Because you're the liaison to the friends of the library. I don't have any updates from the friends. I'm planning to reach out to them, um, if not the end of this week, the beginning of next week, because uh, it's I think it's National Friends Week in October. In October. Um, and I know that they wanted to have a virtual meeting um, in the fall. They wanted to hold off for a little while and then have a, a meeting in the fall. So I have to reach out to the officers. Um, but they they haven't been they, they haven't um, been emailing me other than we've been kind of touching base on and off as we see each other. Um, but it was their plan to do uh, a virtual meeting in the fall that I was going to help facilitate and then um, go from there. But they, they've kind of been off the grid a little bit for during all of this. So. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much. And thanks for doing all this. Yep. I, I just can't believe how complicated the election is. <laughs> I thought it would be less work because I was like, okay, no budget referendum. I don't have to deal with all those numbers. And then the lawyer got back to me with all the absentee ballot stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but it's like once we figure out the process this year, it makes it so much easier next year because we know the deadline. So I can reach out a lot earlier to get things printed and organized and um so this, it's just, you know, the first year we'll, we'll figure it out and the next year will be better. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you so much, Jackie. Congratulations, Jackie, on your appointment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye, Bye. Bye, Jackie. <laughs> Larry was able to join us. So, Larry, you're muted. Sorry I'm late. Uh, I've been spending the last half hour here. Uh, with a fusty computer, so sorry oh. to be late. If anybody has an Asus computer, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> if anybody wants to buy one, don't. <laughs> Asus, it's A S U S. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. I, I told Russ um, yesterday for a finance committee. I I I my um, microphone didn't work. I, I have no idea. I tried. I tried rebooting. I went out. I tried calling on my phone. It said I was in safe driver mode. <laughs> <laughs> so technology, it was. Oh, isn't it grand? First. So, but we're glad you're here. We've yeah, been working right. through the agenda. So, sure um, <laughs> and you're, you're timely. Um, we just we just um jackie filled us in about the trustee election and um i'll i'll send out her updated timeline to, so everybody knows what's going on with that um and the last two things on the agenda were just an update about the proposed budget for 2021 um i have booked a 
Zoom meeting for Monday next week at 4 p.m. So I'll make sure everybody has that information. I'll send out the proposed budget that I've come up with um, so people could review it ahead of time. And you're welcome to talk to me, even if you can't make the meeting. If you want to make the meeting, that's, that's great. It's primarily the finance committee. Um, I don't have a lot of... I don't have a lot of leeway with the with the uh, budget for 2021. I, I I can't find a good way to replace the money that we've lost from the foundation. So that's uh, and and we had a discussion at the finance committee about how do we look ahead for the next couple of years. And Larry, I know your concern. We yes, we're using Mrs. Dunn's money to support operations and we can't rely on that because we're using it to do fabulous things with the building. So, so what, what does uh, 2021 look like, but also how do we look ahead to 2022, 2023 and, mm -hmm. and think about that. So um, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that the, that meeting is on Monday for whoever wants to attend and I'll make sure everybody has the zoom invite. And that's four o'clock, you said? Yep. Okay. And then um, the last part is um, an update from the foundation. And I was really hoping Nancy was going to be able to be here tonight to talk about where we are with the library foundation. But since Nancy's not here, um, I might put Larry on the spot. Mm -hmm. And um, because Larry and Nancy and I and Guy Casentino had a, um, a conversation the Wednesday before I left on vacation. Um, I had scheduled the meeting um, before the foundation had sent some emails um, about whether we're working on the roof, whether we were working on the lobby. I just felt, I felt really um, stressed out <laughs> being in the middle between the two organizations. And I just wanted to sit down and have a conversation about what are the roles of each organization. The actual conversation that we had kind of took a, a different tact and was talking a lot about the what the ownership of the building should be. But Larry, you, any thoughts um, that you had about the conversation or how we? No, I think there was, um... I think that a couple of the takeaways, one is that we should be uh, sending um, meeting notes, especially uh, building committee meeting notes, but, and finance, I think finance committee, there were two or maybe just the board. At any rate, we need to do a better job of, of communicating, even though we have representatives on various committees, the information does not seem to get back to the foundation as a whole. Now, I think I don't blame that necessarily. I, I think it's the structure of the foundation and the fact that they meet, what, three times a year? Uh, you know, how, how can they possibly be informed on a regular basis? Yeah. However, what we talked about was, was sending them meeting minutes. And if members of that board don't read them, then it's on them. So, so that was certainly one of the takeaways that, that it's just a, a failure of communication. Um, there were a couple of options that were discussed, but um, you know, because you know, this, this sort of thing between the, well, is it the, is it the West lobby or is it the roof and so on and so on. One of the things that I noticed wasn't really reflected in our minutes from last last time was the fact that there was discussion about going forward with the roof, but there was no confidence that the, that the foundation could um, act in time in order to put together some kind of a financial strategy uh, and, and approve uh, a roof project, a million dollar roof project in uh, such short notice. So the reason we went ahead and approved the West Lobby project was because, first of all, it didn't involve any money coming from the foundation. And secondly, that package was ready to go at the same time. So both packages are ready to go. And then thirdly, 
neither project is related to one another. So one does not depend on the other. Um, so, you know, when we had the, the emails that went round and round and the notion that, well, you know, maybe the, found, uh, the foundation will put in 300 and the, we'll take 300 out of the done money and all that. I mean, that was just, that was just way too late uh, for any of that to take place. So um, I think in that meeting, Lisa, I mean, with between Guy and Nancy and you and I, uh, you and me, we, we kind of decided that we, one, needed to have a, a meeting uh, set up a meeting to talk specifically about the ownership and transfer the ownership. And I think coupled with that will be a conversation about, okay, then how do we get the roof done? And what's the foundation's role in doing it? Um, so that meeting is scheduled for next week, I think, next either week. Wednesday yep. or Thursday, something in there. It's so, probably going to be Wednesday. I'm waiting to hear back from Mike Trapani. Yeah, yeah. So... I think that's, uh, I can't think of anything else. I, I don't remember what else we might have talked about um, offhand. No, that was really it. Just a lot um, of, con just kind of, re I mean, just kind of retracing some of the, what, what happened, you know, what happened and why kind of thing. But, you know, just because there's a liaison Larry. between the board and uh, the foundation and, and the, um, and committees, it doesn't mean that that information is getting back to the foundation. Larry? Yeah. Um, do you, so you made reference to the notes, um, the minute, the meeting minutes, and I, I too noticed that there really wasn't. So, I mean, legally the minutes are fine as long as we record who made the motions and what the vote was. And you can go way down in the weeds with discussions, but. Sure. I think it would be oh, a that. good idea to do an addendum to the minutes that has, we take those emails and just do a simple timeline. Oh, we lost Larry. Or I did. No, my, um, Joe had to sign off. He has to go okay, get Okay. Um, yeah, he moved over. Uh, so uh, just so that we can note that for our own history, um, sort of the short timeline, it doesn't have, I don't think it has to be in the minutes, but just have they be part of our own record or you know it's it's just very confusing it looks weird on the minutes just to have this well we discussed it and this is what we did yeah so. yeah I, I think it was that i mean it was thoughtful in terms of how we discussed it but we we were advised if you want to stay or, or nancy didn't feel as though there was enough time for the foundation to act right. felt like we had to move forward on something because it's you know uh, upwards of three hundred thousand dollars that's available to us. Why wouldn't we want to take that money, that state money, and and yeah, use projects? It? Yeah, right. So, so I, I think, at any rate, that was that was discussed, and thankfully that there were enough people on the foundation to come around and say, "Okay, go ahead." So, yeah. so we did get an okay from uh, Finger Lakes, and so we'll we'll see where that lands, you know, in a, in a few months. Um, we did talk about the, um, you know, with regard to the roof, that perhaps the um, the foundation or maybe the district could bond for that uh, cost, and then the foundation would pay the bond. Or so, I mean, there's some there's some discussion that still has to take place with regard to that. But um, yeah, trustee minute, meeting minutes and and. Um, and building committee meeting minutes, at least those should go directly to the to the foundation. And I, I don't think it's anything more, Lisa, than just distributing, you know, you distribute a board package, distribute it to them. And right. It, right? I mean, what, right. so so just add them to the distribution list and say, and that, and that was one that, thing. Like, oh, what can we do, right? Sorry. Right. Okay. And that's one thing I wanted to, I, I wanted to make sure everybody knew that um, I didn't do it with the board packet now, but I will, I will send it out. Um, but so you'll see that it'll have a, a CC line and it will be the foundation board will be receiving the same email that I sent to you guys. So if, if you have questions, that's fine. I, if you want to, 
only reply to the board or just be aware that it has all those other people on it. The, the foundation does want to turn the building over to the to the trustees. I mean, that is their ultimate goal. We will, uh, we collectively, uh, whether it's the foundation or the trustees or both, will have to retain uh, counsel in order to make sure that this is all legal and everything is, is uh, right. Um, they also said that their mission is not to raise funds. So somehow or another, we're gonna to have to come through that as well or the, Somehow or another, they're going to come through that. I, I'm not sure because if we want to continue on this this path of you know uh, securing the building, making sure the building is tight and and well well cared for, and we want to implement any type of um, uh, man, that, that continue to implement the minister plan, then there will be some fun you know development that will have to take place. So that's another thing that I think will have to come through. But at any rate, we'll have that meeting next week, I think, and we'll take notes. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Guy, Guy, by the way, did say that he was taking notes and we'll send notes out of that for that September 9th meeting, but I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, no, I didn't see it either. No, so I'm just kind of looking. I have some, you know, some, some scratchings and mm -hmm. that's what I'm reading. So that's, that's what I have. So I know that if Nancy was here, um, that she would say, you know, that um, she she really, um, she's concerned when it's an us versus them kind of a mentality with, um, with the, the district and the foundation. And so I think we're really looking at how, how do we work together? How do we complement each other? Yes. How do our organizations mm -hmm. um, further the goal of, you know, of the library? And so I think ultimately that's gonna be part, a part of this conversation um, as well. So we can get, get past some of the pieces about mm -hmm. ownership and, um, I think it would be really helpful. I know it's fundraising, but I think we should have a gift policy that um, works with the foundation so that if we were to receive another gift or if somebody had a question about it, then we have a ready-made foundation, right? It would have been really mm -hmm. helpful um, for money to go to the foundation. Instead, we hit these legal blocks about you know, we couldn't turn the money over to the foundation because it would have been a gift of public funds. So just clarifying some of that. That, that would have been, having had that knowledge to begin with, yeah. you know, and having that already structure, that structure already in place, mm -hmm. we would be making a, a lot more money on that, mm -hmm. on the money that we now have from the Dunn bequest if it were in the hands of the foundation, no right. doubt. But, oh well. Right, so we'll, it, it's, it's we'll, deal, we'll, deal we'll be that. working on over the, over the next year. I think, um, I, I think it's exciting. There's a lot of opportunity to do some really good work for both organizations. Uh, sure. So any questions about any of the update from the foundation? All right. Um, I think that was everything that was on our agenda. Oh, good. And I came in just in time. You did. You were, it was just perfect timing. <laughs> well, I, I, mean, you know, I met my parents' house, and I was thinking, well, maybe it has something to do with the connection here, but it doesn't. It's, it's um, like I said, don't buy an Asus computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a new one? It's a new oh, I've had one. I, I've had it for a couple of years, and wow. I've been... I've been struggling mightily with it over the years, so I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. So, um, I'm going to send out an email with a bunch of um, information. Like we do have our um, the 2021 budget meeting. There's also the building committee meeting that's on Thursday, October 1st. Mm -hmm. Um there's a bunch of meetings. So I've, I'll be sending that. Right now, 
um, the executive order for allowing us to meet virtually has been extended to October 4th. So we'll wait and see what the it's extended again. Will extend it monthly. Every month he'll have to look at it. Um, I'm still going to, I'll still send out a Zoom link, but if the executive order isn't renewed, then technically we're supposed to meet in person. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm not going to sweat it. Yeah. Okay. Don't sweat the small stuff. Keep your masks handy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. All right, guys. It was right. good to see everybody. Yeah. It was. Good to see everybody. Go and enjoy the rest of this beautiful day, I hope. I know. Yeah, really. Yeah. Do we, do we need a motion to adjourn? I don't know that we ever have. Okay, then I guess we're officially done, Dixie. Very good. Bye. 455. Thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.